realm and we are here tonight with startups and best startups investors and we are at the beautiful museum of nature but most importantly we are here uh, with nolan from capital angels network and we are here tonight behind us we have a slew of amazing individuals that's celebrating a uh, very special here but also a very special occasion so nolan maybe you could share with us why are these people here and if you're watching this here on techopia What's happening here tonight, and what was the purpose of tonight's mashup social, so to speak? All right, thanks, Carlo. So we're here tonight uh, for the Capital Angel Network mashup. Uh, what you see behind us are a number of community uh, startups from the from the Ottawa ecosystem here, uh, and really, it's a bit of a way to celebrate informally, uh, connect angel investors with startups who are maybe looking for funding or looking for funding within the next year or so. Uh, and really that's a great way for us to begin that interaction, less of a formal setting. Uh, a lot of the times we uh, connect with startups through pitches and a very formal way, and this is a great way to just have some drinks, have some, uh, some apps, and uh, just, just relax and socialize and connect with the ecosystem. We've got a few of the companies here that are our portfolio companies that our group has invested in, and uh, for that point is trying to find ways to engage our membership base even more Perhaps they're raising a bit more uh, follow-on financing and uh, really just connect with the community and, and have a great time. We've got people here who are entrepreneurs, uh, we've got investors, we've got people who might think about investing, a lot of ecosystem partners who support entrepreneurship at the early stage as well. Uh, and we've done a good job of representing groups uh, like Startup Garage, Lead to Win, Invest Ottawa, Elspark. Uh, and then startups who are maybe not really affiliated with any of those groups, uh, but they're all Ottawa-based, um, and we've got a huge variety here of companies uh, from SaaS to cybersecurity to, you'll hear some insurance tech, some e-commerce subscription, some biotechnology, um, and some art, uh, augmented reality. There's a lot of interesting stuff, and uh, hopefully there's something to please everyone. That's a lot. <laughs> That's, it's like, <laughs> We have so much time. I gotta get. It, I gotta get it all in. No, it is a wonderful room of individuals. And once again, just a a quick recap of what this year has been like, and also what's happening within the ecosystem. And it's wonderful to see people chatting, and people are kind of streaming. And let's just quickly talk about Capital Angels Network. Uh, I mean, for yourself, it, it's wonderful that you really wanted to kind of get the message out there that there is there is money that is ready to be invested in the right companies here in Ottawa and there are people that really care about growing business and you guys have really stepped up to the plate and I know you've been really vocal about that uh, what's is, what do you want to really get out there tonight apart from that message for sure yeah so 2017 has been a really great year we are still a couple of weeks away from the end so we haven't we don't haven't closed our final numbers but we've got a good idea of what what it's looked like um, so we've uh, seen a few great developments uh, for one we actually launched a, a um, an initiative called the pitch award uh, and that's an opportunity for companies who, who do come to pitch to our membership group to get a small check, kind of ten, fifteen thousand dollars within a few days of pitching. So without any due diligence, it just this, you know, it's the the initiative looks good. The pro I, I like this this uh, this product. I like the the entrepreneur. I have a, a faith early on, and that's just to um, to you know make it worth their while to come pitch. And we've seen we kind of launched that initiative in April, and every other meeting uh, we've been able to uh, award an entrepreneur with that money in check in hand within a few days after after the event. So that's something uh, innovative that was uh, that was put in place last year and is finally uh, kind of, we've, we've really got the ball rolling on it now. So that's one. Uh, secondly, we've invested, um, we're still finalizing our numbers, but we're, we're looking at 14 new companies into the CAN portfolio, which is the most we've ever done in a year. Uh, that was done in 22 different investments. So some were early initial ones, some were follow on. Um, and some were follow on to um, to previous companies as well. We've also seen three companies raise their Series A uh, round with Mindbridge, Bus.com out of Montreal, and ThinkRF, uh, which is a Canada-based company, uh, all raised about four to five million dollars. And we saw one uh, positive exit with 360PI being acquired back in April, uh, which brings our total of exits for our network to eight uh, in the last five years, which is a really good track record. Uh, so it's been a really strong year for Capital Angel Network, and we really hope to, uh, to showcase that here tonight. Well, thank you so much for all the hard work you guys are doing. It's wonderful to see that there's so much support for these entrepreneurs out there. If you're watching this, we are here tonight at the Capital Angel Network social mashup, or mashup social if you want to call it that way. It is a combination of startups, entrepreneurs, investors, 
Um, just phenomenal innovative companies, and most importantly, just once again, showing the support that's out there and making those connections. That's what it's all about. So what we're going to do is we're going to spice this up. Nolan has actually set up several companies that is here tonight that's quickly going to come and tell us a little bit about themselves. So I'm going to, can I invite the first one up? So thank you, Nolan, for joining us. I really appreciate it. So there we go. That was Nolan. Uh, he is part of the Capital Angels Network. Uh, and here we have our first company that's sitting in the hot seat, so to speak. Uh, John, thank you so much for joining us. John, you're with TriCycle. So let's quickly explain. The camera's right there. What is TriCycle? What are you guys focusing? And what is that something that sets you apart from the rest? Well, it's, it's a great question, Carlos. Um, what we've done is we've built a system based on predictive analytics that is designed to start to track human behavior so that we can uh, affect a lot of the issues around the opioid pandemic right now that's happening predominantly in North America. Um, when we started to do the research around the problem, we discovered that there was a lot of issues around the system being really a, a reactive state. Uh, we really haven't changed the medical procedures in 150 years. The doctors used to get in their horse and buggy, they'd go to the family farm, they'd look after you. Then they started to figure out, well, if I stayed home, you came to me, I could see more patients and I could make more money. Well, we really haven't changed the system that much since. So our whole focus was to create a predictive environment where we could use data analytics from a patient that would turn that system upside down. What it effectively does is allows a practitioner, like an early warning system, like radar at the airport, how do we start to predict when you're about to go into a crisis? How do we predict that you're going into a high-risk environment? And rather than waiting for you to come into the waiting room, or rather than waiting for you to fail, we reach out to you. So we tell you that something's about to happen. We get you in, we catch you, so that we can um, add whatever that therapy is required to keep you in recovery. The longer we can keep a person in recovery, the longer or the better their chances are for, uh, for an improved outcome. And that's really what our focus has been. So we've been working on this for about four and a half years. Um, we're really proud of the traction we've been able to create. We've got uh, three partners predominantly in the state of Connecticut, one here in Ottawa. Um, we've just recently partnered with IBM, with uh, IBM Watson Health, um, IBM Research. Um, so we're really proud of the traction we've been able to make, and now we're looking at how do we scale and build it up to be more than it is. Wow, fantastic. Uh, and it's interesting that because your, your timing really is, I would almost say perfect, because there has been very recently a high spike in just the opioid crisis in general in North America, in Canada, in Ottawa. It's been a big discussion in general. So it's wonderful to know that there's a tool like that out there. Um, I guess I should ask you also maybe where, where the company is at now from a growth perspective and what you'd like to do. What is, what is next for you to help you grow, expand? Give us a little update on that. Um, like any um, good startup that's, that's got some traction, um, we've been able to bootstrap this on our own for the last couple, three years. Um, we've had some success with that and we've been able, it forces you in a lot of ways to become very strategic. Um, it allows you to, uh, you learn how to say no uh, very early on, or you should. Um, where we need to be is we need to be able to scale. So we could service now, you know, that four to 5,000 license range of uh, concurrent users, but you get into a whole different order of magnitude when you start looking at the 500,000, you know, the 5 million type of, uh, of users, concurrent users. Um, so we believe that we have the partnerships. We certainly believe that we have the technology. Um, we have the relationships in the field, but it's, it, it's, it's now time for us to capitalize so that we can bring on more talent. It's really all about the people. Um, interesting, interestingly enough, in our place, it's not really a technology issue. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but really what we're trying to do is use technology to help shift a system that's in need of a, of, a, uh, of, a rest of a restart. And so anything that we can do now around capitalizing on our opportunities simply helps us to scale. 
So our whole ambition is to continue to invest in the data and the way that we do that best is by hiring the best people available. Well, John, thank you very much for giving us a little quick insight with regards to Tricycle. It's fascinating what you are doing. If you're watching this, you're watching Techopia Live. We are here tonight at the Museum of Nature at the Capital Angel mashup social, so to speak. Um, it is a pretty awesome event. And John, you're one of the companies here tonight. Congratulations on what you've done so far. And we look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. So we're going to welcome our, our next guest here. Oh, come on in. Come on in. We're just going through the... Oh, I'm so, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> yes, we'll make it happen. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. So if you're watching this, uh, we are at the Capital Angel Network social mashup. Uh, or mashup social, I keep on messing that up. Um, but we're here tonight getting to know some of the amazing companies and let's hear a little bit, Cyril from Live DNA, from Live DNA. Uh, you are dressed up in a <laughs> doctor's <Scientist>. outfit, <laughs> <Scientist. laughs> Dr. McDreamy. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, so explain to us what Live DNA is. Gotcha, thank you. So Life DNA, what we do is we create personalized subscription boxes of supplements and skincare based on your unique DNA. So we take your genetic information, we analyze it, we analyze specific markers, they're called SNPs, in your genes, and based on that information, as well as a family history and lifestyle questionnaire, we create personalized products specific and unique to you. So that kind of seems, why have nobody ever thought of that before? Like, why do you think it has taken so long for a company to even do that. Why do you think this needs to be addressed now? Absolutely, yeah. So I asked myself the same question, like why hasn't anybody thought of it before? But um, I think the timing is right now, right? We have companies like 23andMe and Ancestry that do DNA tests for you, and they're just growing every single day, and more and more people are getting into the whole DNA uh, frenzy right now. Before that, it wasn't that big of a thing, right? You have, I believe there's over a million people or more that have done DNA tests already, and it's growing on every single day. Uh, personally, I don't understand how um, you know, every single person can be taking the same supplement, right? Or the same skincare products, or the same nutrition plan, et cetera. It makes no sense. Every single one of us is different. You and I are different. Right? You and I will be taking the same products. And that's why Life DNA is here, is that we understand that you're different. We understand that your DNA and my DNA is what makes us unique, and we personalize the products based on that uniqueness, which is your DNA. So explain to me a little bit, what, what is your current, um, I guess, revenue model? What is your current scale? Where are you at? How would you like to expand? And what's the next step for you guys moving into 2018? Gotcha, gotcha. Right. So we actually just launched pre-sales in November. So all of our products are ready. We launched the uh, pre-sales website where we got a few sales from that. Um, the goal now is to uh, have the full launch, the full website, um, including grabbing your DNA uh, results and then getting that information and sending you the product early 2018, so hopefully in the first week or so of January, and then um, just scale from there. Right now we're offering skincare supplements, but we're also looking to go into nutrition, we're looking to go into fitness, um, and uh, creating mobile apps and all that, all of it based on your DNA. Now, when you give someone your DNA, that sounds like that's pretty, that's like as, as much as you can give of yourself to somebody, as much information, because that's who you are, that's what you stand for. In general, you know, we are asked more and more to give more and more information about ourselves these days. How do you feel you can get over that barrier, or how do you feel um, people need to maybe be re-educated or educated on, on how that process works and what benefits there are in doing that and providing that information? You're absolutely right. Um, what we like to say is DNA is the blueprint of your life. Right, so it's the most precious thing that you can give. Um, so, you know, to solve that problem, what we have absolutely is we enable anybody to delete their DNA information whenever they want to, at any point in time, um, on our website. We have some of the top security experts in the world on the team as advisors, um, just to make sure that everything is safe. Um, in terms of educating consumers, right, the best thing to do is to explain to them that, um, you know, we are using this information for their own good. It's not, you know, this is. This is something that can help them and uh, benefit their health, benefit their wellness on a regular basis. And of course, they have to understand that, uh, and we help, we help them with that process, that you know, all of their, their information is safe, secure, we don't sell it to anybody, we protect it, and we keep it safe. Well, thank you very much for that. Thank that sounds much. exciting, and good luck, and 
make sure you go check out Live DNA. Thank you so much for tonight, and keep on meeting, keep on mingling. Absolutely. All right, thank you, Zero. Appreciate it. All right, well, there you go. That's our second guest so far. We are here tonight at the Capital Angel Network Mashup Social, which is just a combination of entrepreneurs, investors, and phenomenal individuals that's just coming together and sharing a little bit more about themselves. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you go and check out um, all this information on techopia.ca, or of course you check out our Techopia live interviews we've done up to this point. Oh, we have another one. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hi. How are you? Very good. Thank you very much for joining us. Nice. Um, you are with Redoc. Exactly. Correct, wonderful. Um, and it is Pierre Olivier. I go by Pio. Uh, Pio, uh, Charlebois. <laughs> I'm going to let you say that properly the way it should be pronounced. Your name and last name. Pierre-Olivier Charlebois. Exactly. That sounds much better uh, when you say it. So, P.O., maybe you can explain to us a little bit, what does Redoc do? What does this company stand for? What, is it, what makes it different than the rest out there? Give us that little uh, elevator pitch. So, you know, Redoc is an AI engine that builds uh, winning proposals. So we work with companies and you know, a lot of professional service companies that respond a lot to complex requests for proposal. And essentially what we want to do is free their consultants so they have more time to do higher level and higher you know, value job. And so Redoc will mine all your corporate information, interpret the RFP and understand the requirements, and then surface the right data, right, the right response, uh, so you're 85% of the way. So that's a good start. But then, you know, there's still 15%. So Redoc will guide you to find like, what, what you're missing, right? You're missing certain concepts or certain like, topics that you should add to, you, to your response in order to you know, produce a winning bid. Wow. Okay, that sounds spectacular. <laughs> that's, that sounds like the type of proposal tool we should have gotten a long time ago. So I, I'm always curious, what made you decide that, that there's a market there? Well, I used to own a, uh, a consulting practice, and so we were doing a lot of projects for the government. And I love winning deals, but I hated responding to RFPs. And a lot of our projects were around document automation. And so I pitched this idea to actually BDO. To say, I, you know, I have this idea of leveraging some of the technologies we've built to help you respond to more RFPs and win more. And essentially, they believed. They invested in their proof of concept. And from there, you know, that was 2016, we pivoted the company, shut down the consulting, and then went all in into building that product business. Okay, so explain to me a little bit now. So that's one company that truly believed in you and now supported you. What's kind of on the horizon for you? How would you like to scale? Um, how do you go to market more? Um, what's next for you guys? So we're focusing on uh, management consulting companies, IT consulting, IT staffing. Uh, and uh, what we have observed is we bring a lot of value to large entities, so large enterprise. So we're talking to three of the top, you know, big five, uh, you know, accounting firms out there. Uh, and essentially, you know, we have the vision to expand and provide a corporate brain to the entire like company, so their consultants can ask questions and then get you know fully formed like proposals in response to those uh, questions. So our vision is really to scale within these large organizations and then next year start to penetrate the U.S. market. Oh, wow. Okay. And you mentioned that uh, kind of from the um, IT. Are you are you are you specifically in HR? Are you in accounting? Are you are you taking these industries? one by one, or what's the strategy there? Well, as you can imagine, any uh, startups has to focus you know, quite a bit in order to be successful. And actually, we discussed that a bit earlier today uh, at the panel. You know? yes. uh, and, and, and so we're focusing on professional services companies that win business based on their people. Right? So it's really about like, their consultants, the work they've done, how they did the work, and then what approaches did they use to deliver that work. Uh, and so really, our focus are uh, in um, you know, IT consulting, management consulting, financial services, uh, healthcare management services for, for, you know, there's a lot of inbound leads actually in that domain and we're a great fit for that as well. Beautiful. Well, that sounds like a lot is happening for you. So for a company like yourself and a consultant like yourself that said, listen, here's an idea. I want to take this proof of concept. You pretty much sold the concept and the idea that so we have some of the technology, but we need a little bit of influx of cash. Yeah. Um, what, what is maybe the biggest lesson you've learned in this process to this far and just raising that capital and even just getting that investment or getting that buy-in so to speak uh be like like we're really customer success focused uh so from the early days uh we were listening to customers and what's their problem so instead of like building something in, in our basement uh you know to use the expression we really went out there you know knocked on doors and then talked to like you know prospective customers like what are your problems how do you do today and what's the value proposition are you looking for you know what's 
So what problems, you know, do you have enough, uh, you see enough value to start like, spending some, some money, you know, on it. And so really our focus has been to like deliver some like customer milestones, like, you know, get your first enterprise customer, you know, start monetizing, you know, build revenue to a certain level. And then from there, you know, build your plan. And then you can go to like Capital Angel Network or Angel Groups. Like we've been uh, quite successful with that. Uh, and at that point, like, you know, you, you have a thesis around like how you can grow in the market. You have some like early proof points. Uh, and, and you learn a lot by, you know, having these conversations with your customers. And every time you raise, it's really about like what milestones do you want to achieve? What learning do you need to make in order to reach the next step? And, uh, you know, listen to your customers. I like that. Well, congratulations. Really excited to see what this company has in store for the future and keep on chipping away. It seems like you guys are on the right track and big things are to come. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hello. Come on up. If you're here, we are at, at um, Capital Angel Network, the mashup social, and we are interviewing a variety of the companies that are here tonight. And with me, Lady in Red. Lady in Red. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, Angela Curran. Angela, explain to me a little bit uh, what Athletica is all about and kind of why you started it and why you felt you needed to address that pain point, so to speak. Oh my gosh, how long do I have? Um, it's, it's perfect. Give me the timing. Um, well, obviously, you know my background, but those that are watching, uh, my background is a professional athlete. Uh, in 2013, I cycled across Canada for kids, and at that time, a really close friend of mine was training for an Ironman with her fiance, and this is what spiraled it. So she was actually hit by a driver on her bike ride four weeks out of doing her first Ironman that her and her fiance had trained so hard for all winter. So a lot of people that are in triathlons or marathon running, they know the time you put in, right? So um, with that, it, for me, it was watching this from BC to see that this person that was a dear friend had pretty much been told she was paraplegic on the spot, you know, wedding cancellation because they couldn't go forward with that. All the bills that they had, you know, accumulated. She had no coverage. She was new on the job. It was the social media and the impact from what Dennis posted of this story that for me, I went, wow, there's a lot of people that train like me that are not professional anymore. You know, they're, they're out there they're just doing this because they love it, that there's no coverage. So it was just interesting. Like Johnson Insurance was one of my sponsors when I biked. So I, I went like anybody would and asked the question, is there anything out there that covers people that do recreational sport? The answer was no. And Athletica was born. Uh, it really, for me, was about encouraging an active lifestyle, creating healthier humans, and better yet, protecting them at the same time. And you know, it's been a fun whirlwind of three years, but we are the first SaaS-based insurtech startup where we specialize on top of a rewards program. So we can take you, Carlo, as an Athletica member. You can sign up and you get discounts on things that you're already a purchaser of, like running shoes to bike frames to, you know, maybe traveling to do something out of country. And then better than that is actually protecting those based on what your needs are. So making you a conscious de decision maker of like the insurance coverage that you would like. Yeah, yeah. That is an awesome. That's, I can't get a better elevator pitch than that period. Well, but I love that because you're, firstly, you're very clear and concise on what your messaging is. And I know, I, I know you and I have met a couple times and I know you've been working on this. This has been a labor of love for you. And it's, it's wonderful to see that it's really coming to fruition and you're, and you're making this real impact. I guess what I want to hear from you, you're, you're also a serial entrepreneur. You've, you've had many successes and you've been in the business for quite some time and you've mentored on many levels. But maybe you could share a little bit what in this process has been a real learning curve for you? What did you learn through this? Because this was, you've always been an athlete, but you've not always been in the insurance business, and that, that's a jump, yeah? So maybe you can share a little bit about that. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Um, well, I've learned that you have to persist and be very determined about what you're gonna do, just like being an athlete. Um, the insurance world, you know, just like finance, I think, in Canada, well, globally, we've been hearing so much change in, in the atmosphere and the environment, and insurance is one of those things you're going to start to see a lot of disruption, a lot of innovation starting to take place. I don't really think when I started the concept of Athletica, um, you know, three or four years ago in 2015 that I ever thought I would be into insurance. And, and really, I'm not. Like, I'm, I am, but I'm not. I'm, I, you know what I mean? I'm a marketer. I'm like you. I market and pr promote something I love. And the best part is I, I found the right team to bring the insurance to the plate. So I'm about creating a product or a program that really delivers on protecting those that I love. And, and that's really where it came from. But 
the learning curve of learning insurance and how much it really needs to change has become a, a, another drive of passion for me. So it's been now, as you said, like a mentor and going into that. And I think also a female in tech has been a lot of fun because socks is my background. That's where you know me, right? So socks to insurance, that's a whole other story. So yeah. <laughs> How do you go from that, right? I'm sorry. You, see, but you know what? The socks can be one of the vendors. So sock chalk's actually going to be one of the providers to like if you want to discount our money back on your wallet. There you go. I hear so much more than socks. You might, you, you, that's just a downplay. But um, um, Angela, you're you're so inspirational. Uh, thank you so much for sharing a little bit about your company. I look forward. We will have you back on Techopia again soon. Um, you're such a driver, not just for. Um, entrepreneurs in business, you're a, a, ver you're a leader when it comes to women in business as well, you are a, a go-getter when it's with, with regards to ath athletics and of course now insurance as well, so it's wonderful to see you jumping in these various uh, industries where you feel maybe a little bit out of place but you understand and you're so, you're so dedicated to understand it and, and really make a change happen. So congratulations on all this and we look forward to seeing more in the future. Thank you so much, Thank you so much Angela, I appreciate it. Thank you, happy holidays. Thank you, Angela. So that's Angela, and I think we have one more guy. Come on down, sir. How are you? Good, how are you? Come sit over here. Uh, so if you're watching this, we are at the Capital Angel Network Mashup Social, and we are talking to a variety of the companies here tonight that is everything from investors to startups to companies that's been established for a little while now. Just once again, having that conversation and making those connections. So here I have Adam from Top Savings. Adam, share with us and our audience right there what Top Savings is all about. Top Savings is a, a mobile app that lets consumers find the cheapest price on groceries and consumer packaged goods. So anything you'd find at a drugstore or a grocery store. Okay. So we let the user use their phone, point it at a grocery store shelf or a product in their home, and it'll tell them which store in their geographical area has that item for the lowest price. Uh, we're hoping to save users, an fa average family of four, about $200 a month on their groceries. Okay, so, all right, so you say just pointing it, so instead of now going through flyers and trying to go through all these apps and, uh, and what you just do is literally just take a picture of the item or how can you explain that process for us? Nope. All you have to do is take out your phone and point it at the shelf or the product and it will know within half a second, if it, it'll identify the product and then tell you the cheapest price. <laughs> There's no taking a picture, just point, just point, and you can move it around and, oh, and it. it's real time. Oh, I love it. Yes, Amazing. I'll give you a demo later on over there at our, at our table. I love it, that's so brilliant. So um, so this, ex this is at the moment focused on grocery stores, is that grocery food products or how does it? Uh, groceries and consumer packaged goods, so anything at a grocery store or a drug store. Okay. Um, there's a lot of apps that tell you where you can get the cheapest TV or you can get a deal on your car, but how often do you buy a TV or a car? versus how often do you buy groceries or toothpaste or shampoo. Yeah. Okay, so the obvious question is why you thought this needs, this is the pain point that needed to be fixed. So I'd like to, I, you would kind of assume you know why, but why, what, what was that, that turning point for you? It's like, no, we need, to, we need to change, there needs to be an answer to this. So I've been in the, uh, the deal space, the, the uh, sample space for 20 years. I founded a website called Totally Free Stuff about 20 years ago and then uh, expand it to another website called Top Savings. Uh, so I have an, a large audience of people who are interested in saving money on their groceries and consumer packaged goods. So about six years ago, I'm like, this needs to be real time. You need to be able to do it while you're at the store, not online. And about a year and a half ago, I'm like, I, I realized that the cameras and the phones are getting good enough that it's possible. So I immediately started working on the app and now it works. We have an app that it's not launched yet. It's coming soon. We're pre-beta but the technology works and we're hoping to be out there uh, in the first quarter next year. So, last question for you, so that's nice. So we've had companies now that's been established now for a little while, uh, somebody's that's just going into market and you are now literally in, in launching phase, so to speak. So what is your plan now moving into the new year? How would you like to create those channel partners? How would you like to roll this out? I mean, you have a big audience already, as you mentioned, which is wonderful, so you can already go directly to them, but what's kind of your strategy moving forward from that? So initially we're going to launch in Ottawa. We're going to build a user base in Ottawa, work out all the bugs. It's going to be beta tested here in town. Um, once we're happy with the technology and the results, we're going to roll it strategically across Canada in the, in the major metropolitan areas. And then we want to be within a year and a half in the top 20 US metros. So we want, we're focusing city by city 
because um, the technology works with crowdsourcing. When the users use our app, they actually help us build their database and improve upon the product. And we want to have a, a good community in each city. But, and within two years, we want to be all across North America. Well, that sounds like you just are ready to save people some money. You are ready to, and I think it's so simple. It's so awesome that that's real time. That's great. And uh, good luck to all those flyers out there. That's all I can say. But congratulations. And I wish you nothing but the best. I hope you meet some great people here tonight. And we hope that the future is bright for you guys in 2018. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. So guys, there we go. That was uh, the Capital Angel Network Mashup Social. Thank you for joining us here. We we're here at the Museum of Nature. We encourage you to check us out on techopia.ca for more articles and news surrounding tech. But most importantly, we encourage you to join us for our Techopia Live. This is our, li our last live broadcast for 2017. We hope that you will join us back in 2018. It'll be coming your sh way shortly. Um, probably January 15th will be our first live broadcast again. So we look out and seeing you guys then. Have a fantastic holiday season. We'll see you guys soon. Bye for now. Season. We'll see you guys soon. Bye for now. Season. We'll see you guys soon. Bye for now. Season. We'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.